Today I'm going to show you how to create a series of detailed organic patterns, which have become generally known as Turing patterns. Based on the research into reaction diffusion patterns in nature by mathematician Alan Turing, these graphics are made up of intricate stripes, spots and spirals. I'll show you a clever three-step process in Photoshop that can be used to create the effect. Then I'll explain how you can convert the graphics into seamlessly repeating patterns for use in Photoshop and Illustrator. Stick around till the end of the video to see a few additional steps you can incorporate to generate really interesting pattern styles and to find where you can download my set of 13 Turing patterns totally free. Create your own Turing pattern, create a new document in Adobe Photoshop. Use a document size of 1024 by 1024 pixels, which will allow Photoshop to do a lot of the work to make the pattern repeat. We first need some pixels to apply the reaction diffusion process to. Go to Filter, Render and Clouds. You'll notice that because we've made the document 1024 pixels, the clouds actually repeat at the edges. The first step of the reaction diffusion process is a high pass effect from the filter or the high pass menu. Choose a value of around 6 pixels. Next go to image adjustments and threshold. Use the default value of 128. Then go to filter, blur and Gaussian blur. Use a value of around 5 pixels. That's the basic 3 step process that creates the reaction diffusion effect, but it needs to be applied numerous times over. To save some time, open the Actions panel and create a new action. Now the action is recording, follow those three steps again, starting with the High Pass filter, which extends and enlarges the blob graphics slightly, forming the reaction part of the process. Add the Threshold Adjustment next, which clearly defines the blob shapes with hard edges. The Gaussian Blur step then diffuses the blobs, ready for the process to start again to continue with the reaction. Click the stop button in the actions panel. You can now click the action and hit play to quickly apply the effect again and again. You can see the Turing pattern begin to emerge as the pattern grows, but it takes quite a few clicks of the play button. If you're planning on making multiple patterns, you can speed up the process by creating another action, named repeat times 10. While this action is recording, select and play the original Turing effect action 10 times, then click stop. Whenever you play this new action, the effect will be applied 10 times with just a single click. The action leaves the effect in a blurry state, so apply another threshold adjustment to finish it off. In the settings you can move the slider to create a thinner or thicker line effect. Even though the clouds effect seamlessly repeated, the resulting Turing pattern has lost its repetitiveness at the edges. Hit Command and Backspace or Control and Backspace on Windows to fill the background with white to start again. Add another filter, render and clouds effect. This time use the shortcut Command and J or Control and J on Windows to duplicate the clouds layer another three times, making four in total. Zoom out and use the crop tool to enlarge the canvas. Click and drag each cloud layer to form a larger square. Here you can see how the original 1024 document allows the clouds to seamlessly repeat. Trim the canvas to size with the crop tool. Select the topmost layer, then use the shortcut Command, Alt, Shift and E to create a merged copy. Or go to Layer and Merge Layers and hold the Alt key while clicking the menu option. You can now quickly apply the Turing effect using the action we previously made. Once the pattern has grown to its full extent, apply a threshold adjustment. Hold the command key and click on the thumbnail of any of the smaller cloud layers, which will make a 1024 by 1024 pixel selection. Activate the rectangular marquee tool and move this selection anywhere within the pattern, then go to image and crop. This new 1024 pixel pattern file does repeat seamlessly when tiled side by side. We can convert this raster graphic into a vector pattern by copying it over to Illustrator. Create a new document in Adobe Illustrator, then make sure you have the image trace window visible. Paste in the pattern from Photoshop. In the image trace options, deselect snap curves to lines and check ignore white. The rest of the default settings are sufficient, so click trace. Go to object and expand to convert the tracing result into vector paths. 
You can now create a vector pattern under the Object, Pattern and Make menu. Check how it repeats with no gaps by dimming the copies to clearly see where it tiles. When you click Done, the pattern will be saved as an Illustrator swatch, which can be applied as a fill to any element. Vector patterns can be resized without any loss of quality. Go to Object, Transform and Scale, then check Transform Patterns and uncheck Transform Objects. Adjusting the scale will then only affect the size of the pattern. The Photoshop version of the pattern had quite harsh pixelated edges because of the threshold adjustment. Copy and paste this vector version back into Photoshop to produce a nicer raster version with softer outlines. This version also has the benefit of a transparent background if you disable or delete the background layer. To save the pattern for future use in Photoshop, go to Edit and Define Pattern. It will then be available in the Patterns library when used along with effects like a pattern adjustment layer. As a finishing touch, a gradient map adjustment layer can quickly recolor the pattern. Here I'm using one of the presets from my free duo tone gradients available on Spoon Graphics. Before you go, here's a few additional steps you might want to experiment with to create some really cool Turing pattern effects. After creating the initial clouds filter, you can then distort them further to produce interesting pattern styles. Try adding a motion blur which will be converted into a stripy shape when the Turing effect action is applied. Add a filter, distort and ripple effect, maxed out with the largest settings, which will make another elongated stripe effect. A wave filter makes the pattern a bit more wavy. And for a really cool, somewhat Aztec style effect, add a mosaic filter to the clouds. You can of course process all these effects into seamlessly repeating vector patterns. Check out some of the other effects I created by downloading my free collection of Turing patterns on Spoon Graphics. It contains 13 pattern styles and a variety of formats for Photoshop, Illustrator and other editing software. So if you enjoyed this tutorial or learnt any new tips, a thumbs up on the video would be really appreciated to help spread the word. Click subscribe to stick around for more of my content and be sure to join my mailing list at Spoon Graphics to get your hands on all my other free design resource downloads. As always, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.